All right. What's up, guys? The three people that watch my videos. Um, tonight, we're going to break down Anthony Pettis versus Nate Diaz. It's actually a really good fight. There's always something special on when Nate, uh, when, you know, Pettis is fighting. He's always, he's always doing some crazy shit or he's losing in spectacular ways or he's winning in spectacular ways. You know, he's, he's always, um, he always brings something new to the table. But, um, yeah, it's just going to be a good fight. We'll break Nate down first. Um, you know, pretty long fighter, uh, mostly just relies on his boxing, so the one-twos. Uh, the push jab coming out, and then the right hook. He's a southpaw. Um, elbows in the clinch uh, when he's when he's you know in the clinch, um, when he's standing up in the clinch. Um, kind of slashes opponents up. Um, that's you know one of his favorite moves. Um, he leans over really heavy when he's uh, throwing a one-two. So when he throws the one-two, the second hand, if he misses it. It, uh, he, you know, he kind of dips, leans so heavy on the lead leg. If you kicked it out, he'll just lose his balance. But then he'd probably just pull guard. He's pretty comfortable with that. Um, he'll sit down in a guillotine if he thinks he has it. Um, dangerous off his back. Uh, he's got a lot of submissions off his back. Break down Anthony Pettis now. Um, he's much more of an unorthodox, you know, fighter. Um, not by the book. He has a straight right, uh, lacks the body kick when it's southpaw versus orthodox, which it will be in this fight, um, unless he decides to fight southpaw, which he doesn't because he always wants to be in the opposite stance because that's one of his main weapons. Uh, he's also got a nice spinning back kick to the liver. He's landed that a lot of, uh, a few times in his career. Um, surprised that hasn't ended any, um, any opponents in the UFC, but it's pretty fucking accurate, I'll tell you what, um, his striking tendencies, you know, sits down on his punches to generate, um, power when he's throwing his straight right, like, he really sits down, and, uh, you know, flashy kicks that he throws, that, that, like, say nothing else about him, they can affect the judge, they can affect the judges, you know, psychologically, because the crowd's getting into it, the judges, I think they're in the arena, as, has anyone got to the bottom of that, where the judges are and how they're getting influenced? Because I swear, no one knows. But, um, yeah. Um, yeah, the, you know, when the crowd gets on board, the judges get on board, they're like, they're like, oof. They're like, you know, they're feeling it. They're feeling the, the atmosphere. They're, they're in the atmosphere. So, yeah, those flashy kicks do do something. Um... He's all, yep, yeah, able to strike at both stances, talked about that, uh, lots of body kicks, yep, um, his grappling techniques, you know, he's got uh, triangles, arm bars off his back, both these guys are real dangerous off their backs, which is real interesting, I don't think anyone will, uh, take it to the ground, because they're both, they both have, um, they're both probably intimidated to lose on the ground, <laughs> Um, because these guys are, these guys are tricky. These guys are sneaky. They're not like your usual black belts. They'll, um, they'll pull some, like, tricky shit. Um, his grappling tendencies sits down into a guillotine like Diaz. Uh, you know, he stays calm, patient, and waits for the right moment to explode. Uh, I did that a lot when he was in the body triangle, um, of someone. Was it Jim Miller, or was it, um... Who the fuck was it? Or was it, um, Dustin Poirier, he got in a body triangle and he, you know, he just waits for the right moment to twist out of it and then he's up in top position, ready to land ground and pound. Uh, and his guard, his guard's like really difficult to pass. I don't think I've ever seen anyone pass it, um, in recent memory. And if they do, he gets it back pretty quickly, regards very well. Oh, wow. Um, Pettis, Pettis is, um, win loss record. Win W L W L W. See, you know what's coming next. That's how I break down my fights, guys. Um, all right. So Pettis, how he wins. Um, he's got, you know, considerable power in his right hand. He's dropped his last three opponents. Uh, he's a legit BJJ black belt. Same with Nate Diaz. 
da- dangerous guard game. Talked about that. Um, when he's given space to maneuver, um, so you know when he's when he's got distance, like distance between his opponent to kick, uh, push kick, ta- do his taekwondo moves and stuff. He's got a good chin. You don't see him get hurt or dropped much. Um, yeah, his his guillotine's pretty good. Um, the one that you got Charles Oliveira with. Um, kicks to the body, aggressive ground and pound. Yeah, in that first round with um, Du Bronx, his ground and pound was looking real nice. I think maybe with Miller as well, he fucking bashed his head in. I just can't remember that Miller fight, but um, I'm pretty sure he dominated. Uh, good submission defense, good crown of striker. He's like, they just every minute of the fight, you know, like he can just, as we saw in the Wood, uh, Wonderboy fight, um, he can just, he just, he's just a finisher, you know, like he, he's, um, he's always looking for the finish or he can just pull it out of the hat. It seems like he could just pull it out of the hat anytime he wants. Uh, that's what makes him so exciting. Uh, Nate Diaz, how he wins, good recovery, saw that in the corner fight, good chin, took round one McGregor, uh, McGregor left hands. Um, you know, he taunts his, um, opposition in the ring, um, you know, that's kind of psychological warfare, kind of makes them want to, makes them want to scrap, and that's exactly what he wants, you know, that's what he's trying to do, he's trying to bait you into a scrap, he's trying to get you under your skin, trying to make your ego hurt, and trying to make you throw hands with him, because that's what he wants, that's what he thinks he'll win at every time. Uh, he's got good distance, range control, um, doesn't keep his hands that high, um, you know, kind of, bounce. he's got good head movement though, we'll see if his reflexes are still there, he's not that old, you know, 34, but who knows, probably hasn't been, probably hasn't been sparring very hard, um, over the last three years, because who the fuck needs to when you got all that money now, you know, you don't need to spar that hard, you're not training for a fight, but who knows, the Diaz is a different breed than all of us, so I couldn't even begin to understand him. Fantastic cardio, constant combinations, um, you know, he likes it when you stand in front of him and trade. Uh, when he's coming forward, I, I'd say he's probably the best he um, he can be. Um, how he loses, doesn't check many leg kicks, none at all really. Uh, he's really heavy on that lead leg too. Um, his kicks are terrible, shouldn't throw him, he gets too comfortable on his back, you know, stays there for a long time, uh, when the opponent has good footwork, RDA, um, Josh Thompson, they got that in and out movement, he kind of has trouble with that, um, pulls guard a lot, it's not very good in three round fights, uh, suplex takedowns, um, saw that only in the Rory McDonald fight, but, it was very obvious he did not know what to do in that situation. If Khabib ever got his hands on him in, in without, you know, twenty Diaz goons around them, in in a cage, if this is Diaz, like that's such a mismatch. Oh man, I hope they make that fight. If um Diaz beats Pettis, um that'd be hilarious. Oh man, Khabib would definitely get the takedown record, um against Diaz. Because he would just suplex him. Uh, Diaz didn't know what to do in that situation. He didn't even fight the hands, really. He, like, he just kept getting picked up and put down. And Rory just found it like super obvious, uh, super easy and just kept going on it. Um, another thing, he doesn't have much power in his hands. So, you know, doesn't he doesn't intimidate the opponents that much. Um, poor takedown defense and his own takedowns aren't very good. Definitely say so Pettis has the takedown advantage. Um, how Pettis loses, uh, his cardio in five round fights, I mean in high pace fights, is pretty questionable, seems to slow down the third round, uh, can get backed up into the cage very easily, but, you know, he does do some crazy shit off the cage, like showtime kicks and stuff like that, but still can, it's a, it, maybe that's what he does, actually does that on purpose, I don't know, but he's the only person on the fucking MMA that could do that shit, no one else can get backed up to the cage and be still threatening, um, poor takedown defense, gets cut up easily, he's got a lot of scar tissue I guess, um, Diaz will probably bust him up in this fight, or probably, I reckon this fight will have a lot of blood on it, 
like maybe the Tony Ferguson fight. Um, depends how many elbows are thrown. Hopefully everyone just starts throwing elbows and it's a fucking bloody war. Um, ends up on bottom when he's trying to obtain a dominant position. You know, tries to do it too hastily. Ends up on bottom. Uh, can find himself in close proximity after uh, missing a kick. Uh, you know, usually a spinning kick. Um, can find himself in distance. Um, but probably won't be a problem here because Nate doesn't have the power to um, you know, put him down with one shot, so Pettis can, you know, take one, take a jab, I guess, um, and just step back, uh, into kick range, uh, chain wrestling also is a problem with control on his back for long periods of time, and, um, I don't know, um, I don't know if he's a quitter or not, but, um, he definitely, uh, he definitely stops, you know, he's been stopped a few times, but, it's not because, like, you know, he was fucking destroyed. He just kind of gave up. Uh, the Dustin Poirier fight, you know. Could you imagine Tony Ferguson tapping to that? Tapping to a body triangle after, he, like, he hurt his rib. Um, or broke his rib. Like, I don't think Tony would fight through it, I reckon. Um, that's the difference between... I don't know if Nate would fight through it. Probably would. I can't imagine Nate tapping to that. Um, also the Holloway fight just kind of gave up, even at the end of the round, just kind of gave up, he could have, he didn't want to wait, he didn't want to go back for, uh, the fourth round, like, it was, what was it, 450 when he got TKO'd, and he just kind of sat down, and, you know, Max doesn't have that power, he just kept, he just didn't want to be in there, you know, who else, oh, Tony, the Tony fight, um, you know, didn't want to go, <laughs> can you blame him though? Could you fucking imagine doing a round with Tony Ferguson? But, um, yeah, he just didn't want to go out again. Um, sat in his stool and, um, you know, tried to get the medic. Uh, X-Factors in this fight, uh, Pettis small, 150, uh, 170er. Um, what's the morale like in the gym? You know, Sergio sucks, <laughs> Tyron, um, Lost his belt. Askren just got fucking killed. CM Punk's just doing his own shit there. I mean, what's the morale like over there? I guess poor fella just got a co-main event, but whatever. Uh, he seems to have a more power at 170. Uh, and he's actually 4-7 and seven has lost 11 fights. So, yeah. Diaz got a 2-inch height advantage, 4-inch reach advantage. It looks better at 170, physically, um, you know, he's got a good cardio advantage on him, three years since his last fight, that's the reason I think the odds are so, um, against him, uh, he's a vegan, so, what's the strength like, you know, um, Diaz asked for the fight, so, you know, why did he do that, It's a good question, uh, fighters from his camp don't seem to involve much, of involve, uh, improve much, sorry, um, you know, we saw Melendez, 239, um, you know, didn't check leg kicks very much, you know, just got fucking pieced up by the new breed, and Showtime's been fighting while Diaz has been sitting out, um, smoking weed. Pass the victory for Diaz, reverse position and get top control, uh, if he gets taken down, put a pace on Pettis that he cannot keep, uh, Colby Covington-like, you know, it's only three rounds, come on, just hit him 500 times. Back him up against the cage and tee off. Uh, check leg kicks, <laughs> if you can. Or counter with hard punches. Um, keep the fight at boxing range. Uh, pass the victory for Pettis. Low calf kicks and bunches. Just kick that fucking leg. Knees uppercut when Diaz overextends on the 1-2. Mix in takedowns with striking. Top control, don't get into war. You know, body kicks. Takedowns at the end of the round, secure the round. Uh, don't respect his punching power. Close the distance, throw bombs. Talking really fast because I'm running out of time. 15 minutes. Um, screw cast matic fucking thing. I'm getting fucking pushed along. Uh, get back into kicking range again. Uh, and then, you know, stay in kicking range. Uh, I've actually got Diaz by uh, TKO in round three. Um, that's my prediction. But I'm actually not too sure about that now. Um, I'd probably say Diaz by decision, and I actually like that $3.50 for Diaz by decision. Uh, but if you don't like that, just play his fucking money line. Um, I'm putting one unit on that. 